eight people. It's, uh, it's the 2nd of April right now, and that's putting you right in the middle of what should be the most intensive period of deer hunting in most Australian deer hunters' calendars. Smack bang between the raw for the reds and the croak for the fallow. And I'm just at home here just regathering and preparing to shift hunts. I'm actually going to start looking at some fallow for the next couple of days. And I'm excited about that. I feel like we're experiencing a bit of a, a later rut and raw this year. And it's got a lot to do with many different factors, but it's been dry. Even, even with a few rain events spattered in between in March, like, it would just get so hot so quickly again the next days. We've just had an Easter there where the temps were in many areas well above 30 degrees. That, that puts a lot of animals down. Just resting makes us want to do the same. Been a bit of a hard slog, but by all means I shouldn't complain because I've set myself up for a harder time this year. Um, without going into it, that's for the next video, but for the fellow, this is hello. For the fellow, this is a thing. Bow hunting's hard, eh? But it's so damn addictive. Not giving up rifles at all. This is just an amazing thing that's really complimenting and giving me some renewal and rebirth to a lot of my hunting passion. I absolutely love it. But for the last week, I've been chasing reds in some country which I have experienced over a couple of years. I haven't seen all of it, but I've seen a lot of it. And conditions were hard. I had a friend in with me for that. But we gave it our best shot. So things started for me in mid-March just chasing some fallow around pre-rut. Um, got the freezer full, but then started chasing fallow with the bow and a few bow blocks. And one thing that was quite apparent from that was I was just seeing no bucks whatsoever. Seeing the start of some rut activity, but not hearing croaks. You're doing some very dry, hot days. And Absolutely. it's been a pretty similar story with the Reds, to be honest. Um, all I can do is show you what's been going on. This is what the last week of the ruts look like for me, guys. This is part one. Hoping to bring you part two in the next week or so. But in the meantime, I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your autumn. Absolutely overjoyed to see so much good success coming out of Tasmania's buck season, which has just wrapped up. Folks here on the mainland, for most of us, we're just getting started. We're getting out of good times natural. Maximum respect. The whole goal of today is that we just don't want to flood this area out, we want to be restrained. Let them make their noise, hopefully glass them up and work with that. That's the plan. So we glassed up another hunter and that's cool. And he was kind of poking around exactly where we were trying to glass into. So Probably good to leave it at that. Kind of suss out of this area. We'll go suss another one out this afternoon. This is half the reason why we didn't pitch a permanent camp yesterday. It's just to give ourselves that flexibility to shift around, work out where we want to really invest the rest of the week and yeah, see how it's all going. He's gorgeous.
if there's any weather coming in, we're not going anywhere. We're sorted. But also, quicker access to good country on both sides. We went after a little glass, saw a goat. Now it's proper raining, and this is the best thing that could have happened. We've got some free water. Lucky us. That rain continued on through most of the night. Has cleared up at daybreak. Bluebird day ahead of us. Crunches off the ground. Well, mostly. It's just like a tenth of what it was. We're actually gonna go drop in the colder sides of the hill. Kind of some country I actually haven't seen before, but I've always had a hunch about. Oh man, it feels good. It feels excellent. You're right. Oh fuck. You're right. Look. Oh, he has smashed that. Why are they green? And they have more up there. He's just gone to town. He's been furious. Yeah. That's the most encouraging sign we've seen. Oh, absolutely. The main sign being a bit like. Hasn't had a chance to die off yet. That's really interesting. Quick crossing here. Little spot down there. Look how big that is. Split in the middle. Big smear. It's a big hoof. Let's have a go. Oh wow.
just sat here on our asses for an hour. Rose. We heard some early moans earlier, but they weren't a response to our roars. He's right down there on the big shit. What time's dark? Oh, closer to seven. Excellent day spent bush. Doesn't matter how tired my legs are. Seeing something like that at the end of the day, smelling this fresh air, it's utterly sacred. So it was happy days. Well, this is my last afternoon at it. And I've got two hours left. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of this hill. Just to see, just to know. Just to cover all bases. Oh, it's been a... <clears throat> it's been a challenging seven days. Absolutely exhausted. But you've gotta be in it to win it. So down I go. Good. Just for size comparison, it really doesn't get much better. There's just a whole line of rubs zigzagging this spur. It got to a certain point down, and then it, from there on, rub to the shit. But also, rubs from multiple years ago. But I'm just taking a punt because it's so damn fucking crunchy that just right down the bottom of the scullies, I know that there's, it's the wettest spot. So it'll have grass. Gotta be in it to win it, folks. I'm going down. Well, six days, that many deer seen, but so so much sign and so much promise and hearing a few roars but only a few 
I'm going to give it just another 10 minutes. Um, you can see I'm losing the light up there. I need to go, well, up there to get home. <laughs> don't really want to do that all in the dark, but I'll just give it another 10 minutes just to watch a little longer. Folks, this is just the first part of my rut month, if you like, but what you've seen is representative of public land red deer hunting. That's quite normal. That should be the base level expectation. And we all know that basically anything within that time can happen. You can have stags on the deck on the first afternoon, the second morning, or on the eighth or the ninth day in, if you have that luxury of time. I create that luxury of time. The only reason that I'm not back out there right now is because we've got 80 mil of rain coming on Thursday and Friday. And that's going to wash off the first few days of my fallow deer hunting plans, but I'll be into the fallow straight after that and how lucky I am, how lucky we are to live in a country where we're choosing one or the other and that we have public land to do that on. But to remedy that red deer hunt, absolutely I'll be out there again. The landscape will have a refresh. I'll probably be expecting something where It'll be the tail end of the raw, or what's left over of it. But animals in the area, hopefully, that'll be the only way I get to scratch my itch. Seven days wasn't enough? Well, let's see what eight, nine, or ten does. Anyway, folks, this was part one. Hope you bring me part two next week or two. And maybe with some antlers on the hands, and some fur on the deck. Good time to natural. <laughs>